So now that we've talked a little bit about the basics of gating and sort of its more utilitarian aspects, um, now we can talk about side chaining, which is, I mean, I think a little bit more interesting way to use gating and something that I actually do quite a bit um, in both subtle ways and really obvious ways. So usually gating, um, usually when, when you gate something, the gating effect uses the, the, both the signal coming in, it uses the signal coming in as both the control signal, meaning the signal that tells the effect what to do, and it's also the affected signal. So the in, in traditional gating, and in a lot of effects actually, the control signal and the affected signal are the same signal. And what side chaining allows you to do is it allows you to split this up. So that means that basically the signal that is controlling the effect, that's telling the effect when to turn on, when to turn off, is not actually the effect that's being, not actually the signal that's being affected. So all this stuff that we talked about before, uh, about the, the flipping and the threshold and the attack and all that stuff all remains the same. But all you do in, in, in live is you click the small arrow, um, the top corner of the effect. What that'll actually do is bring you a drop down menu and you could pick any track, other track in your set to be the control signal. And so um, I'm going to show you a few ways to do that. But the, but the important thing to think about is that actually is that is that what side chaining does is it allows the control signal and the affected signal to be two different signals. Um, and uh, as was pointed out in the Dubspot tutorial that just came out a few days ago, um, this also uh, is present in the compression and in the um, and in the auto filter. And it's actually something with if which if you have Max for Live you can actually sidechain anything to anything, which is one of the coolest things about Max for Live. But uh, anyway, so we're gonna go into sidechaining right now and I'm gonna show you how to um, use sidechaining, sidechain gating in order to create rhythmic effects on a static pad. So first we're gonna engage this other clip right here, um, which just has a, a, a pad on it. So you can hear this, um, And you can hear it has some rhythm, but not, not a lot of rhythmic variation. Just raise it a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and drop a gate on this, and you can see it immediately turns off because the signal's not hitting that threshold. So we lower the threshold and then there's no effect whatsoever. So we go ahead and open this drop-down menu. You can see this is where it says side chain. So you're gonna click that little arrow and then you're gonna get a side chain menu. Go ahead and click this here. Actually, before we do that, let's uh, let's create a mini track. So this is gonna be the track that's gonna supply the control signal. So I already have a kick drum loaded on this. Let's just go ahead and uh, draw a pretty basic rhythm. Um, in this, on this clip here. And this rhythm, I mean, the sound actually doesn't matter. It's actually the rhythm that matters. So it can be any drum that you want or sound. We go ahead and turn that off so you can't hear it. And then we're gonna side chain uh, track two to this ghost track. And you can hear Now we just basically have the pad playing the rhythm that we drew into that MIDI track. And once again, you can mess with these release and attack um, parameters to make some pretty cool rhythms here. So if you wanted to, you could just mess with this stuff here. But also what you can do is add effects onto that MIDI track, the control track. In this case, we're gonna add a simple delay. And now you can hear that there's gonna be a little bit of more variation because now the control track has effects on it. 
So now the the control the signal coming from the control track is more complicated. So since it is more complicated, you're gonna get a little bit more of a nuanced or uh, interesting rhythm on that thing right there. And this you can do this forever with all kinds of rhythms. I would usually I usually use a, a delay or an arpeggiator to add um, a little bit of different uh, rhythmic variation to that that control track there.